Welcome into the Wilt Fong Whip Round. We got another action-packed episode today. I am your host, Josh Newberg. And remember, this show airs on the On3 Recruit channel every Monday and Thursday. Now, the great Steve Wilt Fong, he's here. He's, we're going to make sure that you guys have all the latest intel on your favorite college teams. We're going to get right into it today with our big spring game visit weekend previews. But first... You guys have done a great job helping this channel grow, but look at this. We're almost to 50K. Need your help getting there. Look at how close we are. Go ahead, hit subscribe for me, please. All right, let's bring on the GOAT himself, Steve Wiltfong. We got so much to cover today, Steve, but I want to start with a few of your recent predictions that have really rocked the recruiting world. So let's take a look at this week's Fong Bombs and start with quarterback Houston Longstreet. You dropped one this week for him to Texas A&M. Yeah, Texas A&M has been the program to beat since January, got him on campus the first weekend of February and got him back a couple weekends ago. But that's not to say there hasn't been major competition for this young man as Auburn has gotten him to campus a couple times this spring. Also took visits to Ole Miss and Oregon. If Oregon does not win this recruitment on Sunday when he announces his college decision, they are going to continue recruiting him. He had two fantastic visits to Auburn, Josh, once for mm -hmm. a spring practice. And then he returned this past weekend for A-Day. He loves the way Auburn practices. He loves Hugh Freeze's offense and the continuity within that program. But his best relationship is with Colin Klein and Texas A&M. This is the guy Mike Elko and that new staff targeted right when they got to College Station. They sat down, watched film rushed out to see him in California and saw him throw. He'll be a huge get for this new staff as they try and build this program up with their recruits and players. He's been to A&M twice, has a really good relationship with Mike Elko in addition to Coach Klein. I like the way it's trending for A&M here, but still, as I talked to you on Thursday morning, nothing final. Auburn's still battling here, and then Oregon and Ole Miss aren't going to go away. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Auburn for Longstreet, but I trust your pick there. Um, another one that kind of shook the recruiting world was earlier this week, you put in a pick for Edge Zion Grady to Miami. Now, Zion Grady was one of the big uh, D commits when Nick Saban retired, kind of in the wake of that, and it looked like maybe Georgia was going to pick him up, but now you're predicting Miami. Yeah, I think that this most recent visit to Miami was another reminder why he's so high on the Hurricanes, the connection with Jason Taylor, Jason Taylor's track record as a player, the excitement around the Miami program, the trajectory under Mario Cristobal and the staff, the way they make him feel at home, these awesome visits. Miami, in my opinion, is the one to watch for Zion Grady in his recruitment heading into the official visits. Georgia is the other school that's near the top of his list. And then he's also high on Auburn and Tennessee, mm -hmm. Florida State. He's at Florida State this weekend. But Miami is setting the pace right now for Zion Grady. All right, Eric Winters, this one caught my eye because you project him to Auburn. But the reason I was caught off guard is because he's about to make a decision here. So are you predicting Auburn and Auburn soon? Well, teaming up with colleague Chad Simmons and kind of comparing information – we like where Auburn stands. He's been to Auburn a couple times this spring, always gives it big returns, the opportunity to come in and restore Auburn, a top college football hierarchy is something that's very exciting to him. He thinks Hugh Freeze and that coaching staff is able to get it done, uh, but he's going to be at Georgia this weekend for G-Day, maybe another return visit to Miami. So those are some of the other contenders. Has also been to Tennessee recently, but talking to sources, comparing notes with Chad Simmons, I like where Auburn stands for Eric Winters right now. Mm. All right. The next one up was running back JT Lindsay to LSU. Now, I thought uh, James Simon might be the one that's paired up with Harlan Berry, but you're putting in a pick now for JT Lindsay. Explain that one to LSU. Well, he was just offered by the Tigers this week uh, yeah. on campus. My pick joining uh, Shea Dixon and and billy billy m body but you know he was at lsu in march too and he talked about possibly playing and shining on the biggest stage in college football at that time and he just loves this coaching staff he says the coaching staff are winners and they produce great players and the opportunity to do it in state 
playing for this LSU staff on that stage is very exciting for him. Mm. All right, Steve, any other picks that you want to mention from this week? There was a bunch. I'm going to link your pick page in the description below so people can go find those. I think you had about 10 or more. <laughs> any other picks you want to talk about? Yeah, two picks. Let's talk about uh, the first one I made last night. Austin Alexander, a defensive end out of Kentucky. Sean Alexander's nephew. I like where North Carolina stands for him. Ted Monachino and Jason Jones have done a good job in this recruitment for the Tar Heels. He's been on campus a couple times, and he's a top overall target for Mac Brown and company. They love him on the edge. And this is a young man that's not only high on what North Carolina can do for him on the field, but what they can do for him off the field. And then let's see her. Brooks is a exciting receiver out of Millville, New Jersey, who had 22 touchdowns as a junior. He is one of the top pass catchers on Alabama's board. And following another recent visit to Tuscaloosa, where he spent time with Coach DeBoer, Coach Shepard and company, Alabama is the clear team to beat in this recruitment. Kentucky, another top contender for Latsir Brooks, but this is a guy that Alabama covets, and I like where the Crimson Tides stand. Joe Hastings, Andrew Bone, Tim Watts at Bama Online also like Alabama's position for this exciting playmaker. All right, guys, let me know. What do you think of the recent falling bombs? Which is the most surprising? Which ones do you like the best? Let me know. Comment section below. All right, let's head to Columbus, where Ohio State recruiting is red hot. They got the number one class in America right now, and the spring game is this weekend, and there's going to be some big names on campus. We got on three Steve Wiltfong here to break it all down. Let's take a look at some of these big names. We'll start right here at the top. DeCorian Moore uh, committed to LSU, but we know he was at Texas last weekend. Steve, there's some optimism coming from our inside Texas site that DeCorian Moore is going to eventually – flip to Texas. Uh, do you sense that maybe Moore's commitment to LSU is, is weakening here? Well, I would say that LSU is going to have to battle to keep them, and they've mm -hmm. known that for a long time because DeCorian Moore has been taking visits to other programs. He's no stranger on that Austin campus in Texas and loves what Steve Sarkeesian has done historically with wide receivers and offenses. And he's talked to me in the past about how it's close to his mom, close to home. And, and, and so there's an exciting vibe around Texas football right now. He's made multiple visits this spring. This will be his second visit to Ohio State this spring as well. He also got a chance to see them practice earlier this spring and just loved the competitiveness that he saw on the field, enjoyed his time around the receivers that are currently on Ohio State's roster. And he pointed to Brian Hartline's track record of taking five stars and making them even better, getting them into the first round of the NFL draft. So he's excited to get back up to Ohio State. And then you have Oregon. Oregon's a major contender in this mm -hmm. one too. He's been to Eugene a few times. He's going to visit again in May, and then he's going to take his official visits in June. So all these schools that we mentioned, LSU included, is going to get him back to campus a few more times. So this is a recruitment that's got a lot more runway. I think that Texas is one that's going to do what they can to get him in the fold, but they got some stiff competition as well from Oregon and Ohio State as they all try and pry him away from Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers. Yeah, and speaking of runway to their recruitment, Jonah Williams has some left to go at one point, you know, and he still is trending heavily to Oklahoma. But then last weekend, he makes that visit to Texas. This weekend, he's on campus at Ohio State. This recruitment seems to be a little bit more wide open than maybe the RPM shows. Yeah, I think this is one where he's he's definitely going through his process and continuing mm -hmm. to have dialogue and go see top schools. Had a great visit to LSU Texas and Texas A&M are open in his eyes and he's excited about Ohio State you know this defensive coaching staff uh, the culture of the program and, and and just the track record of success that they have not only on Saturdays and with the NFL draft is something that is exciting him and he's excited to get get up there and, and continue to see more and learn more about Ohio State. All right, let's talk about linebacker Madden Ferriamo because he's coming in from San Diego, California. Now, USC leads on the recruiting prediction machine, but do you think Ohio State has a shot here? There's a couple Midwest programs in the thick of this one. Notre Dame is another uh, pro another program that is in the thick of it for, for Madden Ferriamo. Mm -hmm. 
All right, now defensive lineman Jakeem Stewart. This is an interesting visit. It's his first time to Ohio State. There's two ways you can look at this. You can look at it as it's, it's a great early visit for a 2026 prospect, the number one 2026 prospect in the country. But there are rumors, well, he said on Philip Duke's show that he is considering reclassifying up to the 2025 class. And if that were to happen, then we are right in the thick of it for Jakeem Stewart, who's going to be a top 10, top five player in the 2025 class. So uh, how important is this visit for Jakeem Stewart in Ohio State? Well, he looks physically ready to play college football right now. You could put him on the field at Ohio State where he's visiting this weekend in pads and he would fit right in with some of the creatures that are walking around Ohio State's program. Uh, and Ohio State's one of his early favorites. I mean, this is a young man that's high on USC, Texas, just had a great visit to Auburn, of course, LSU. And Miami's really resonated with him as well. But Ohio State, he's been looking forward to this visit for a long time. Larry Johnson, the Buckeyes, it's a program that he's been keeping a keen eye on. There mm -hmm. is a lot of excitement and anticipation around getting up to Ohio State. And I think that they're expecting over 80,000 people for this spring game. It's going to be a hell of an environment. This is a chance for Ohio State to continue strengthening their position. And like you said, if, if he reclassifies to the 2025 class, and I think they're looking into the academic load uh, of, of getting that done, because again, yeah. there's no question marks physically on can he do it. Um, we'll be seeing official visits soon. And, right. and I like where Ohio State's position amongst other front runners here for Jakeem Stewart. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he has to say. Actually, there's going to be a lot of action this weekend in Columbus. So we'll have that covered on the next show but also go to letterman row alex gleitman matt parker and the boys they do an incredible job covering all things ohio state recruiting all right let's head down south let's go to gainesville florida the gators are building some momentum down there billy napier they got the 16th ranked class in america but they are looking to move up with a couple big additions and they have some big names on the board let's break it down with steve wiltfong uh five-star wide receiver caleb cunningham he was at uf Back in January, I thought, okay, this might be a courtesy visit. He needs to come back in the summer. Well, he's coming back much sooner than that. He'll be there this weekend. How big of a threat, how legitimate of a threat is UF to landing five-star wide receiver Caleb Cunningham? Well, he's got Florida in his top 12. It's a school mm -hmm. that he has interest in. And we've seen Florida go into the state of Mississippi and have some success. Caden Daniels being the most recent a running back that's going to play in the spring game this weekend. You know, Mississippi State is certainly a program that's one of the top contenders for Caleb Cunningham. Je Jeff Levy and company have done a fantastic job of getting in early with him and building that strong rapport. Um, Bama, he has an official visit locked in with Alabama. Florida State, he always feels at home in Tallahassee. Uh, but Florida, a return visit, like you said, he definitely has a genuine eye on, on the Gators and looks forward to getting back up there and spending more time with Coach Billy Napier and his staff. Mm, yeah, another big man on campus, literally a big man on campus, is Jalen Wiggins. He goes 6'5", 235 pounds. He plays at Rickards High School up there in Tallahassee. So he's from Tallahassee, committed to the Florida Gators. Uh, he was back at UF last week, and I know Florida State's trying to flip him. Does he have any other visits on tap? How do you consider his commitment to UF right now? Well, he's keeping other schools warm. So anytime Florida can get him back to campus, it's a big thing. He was recently at Florida State. you got schools like Stanford poking yeah. around on him. So he's got the creme de la creme academic schools, creme de la creme football schools, all pushing for him. So Florida, one of their top prospects that already have in the fold to just get him back around the swamp, feeling why he's a Gator is big for, for this coaching staff. All right, number six safety, Hilton Stubbs from Jacksonville Mandarin. He'll be back in Gainesville this weekend. Uh, he shocked a lot of teams, a lot of teams in the South when he committed to USC a couple weeks ago. Uh, do you think UF still has a shot here? Well, he's definitely keeping the door open for several schools. Miami mm -hmm. just blew him away last weekend. So we'll see if Florida is able to do that this weekend. You know, there's still a lot of suitors around this recruitment, and it's Florida's opportunity to uh, show him why the Gators are, are the program for him. And, and there was a time early in his process where Florida was considered the one to beat. So he's definitely right. got a lot of love for the Gators. Yeah, we'll see if Gators can circle back on that one. Uh, 
Before we get you out of here on the Gator Talk, I want to know your thoughts right now on where UF stands with quarterback Ryan Montgomery. We talked so much about these QB dominoes. We're going to see another big one fall on Sunday in Houston Long Street. So Ryan Montgomery's time is coming up soon. How do you feel about him as it relates to UF? Well, he had another fabulous visit to Gainesville. Time spent with Graham Mertz. You know, of course, Ryan O'Hara, Billy Napier. He feels extremely comfortable in Gainesville. It's an atmosphere and culture that he really vibes with. And he believes this coaching staff is one that can get Florida ripping and roaring. And, and he's enjoyed film sessions with Coach O'Hara and just uh, really thought that Graham Mertz was a first-class guy. And so he likes the just the culture, again, around Florida. Now he's going to go to South Carolina's spring game, and that might be it. That might be the last visit. Okay. So the Gamecocks have been considered the one to beat uh, for a lot of this process, but Florida and Georgia are in the thick of this one down the stretch. The Bulldogs had him on campus a couple weeks ago. Mike Bobo, Mike Bobo, offensive coordinator, has poured a lot of time into him. But it's Dal Logan's and, and uh, South Carolina's turn to get him back and, and remind him what he loves so much about the Gamecocks. And I know he's extremely high on South Carolina as well. So South Carolina's spring game weekend will be a big one in the Ryan Montgomery recruitment. Then he'll come home, talk things out with his family. But Florida definitely put their best foot forward when they had him on campus last weekend. It was a big visit. Yeah, and you know we're getting down to it. There's only six quarterbacks in the top 25 that remain uncommitted, so Ryan Montgomery's time is coming soon. Gator fans, let me know how we are feeling. Let me know. Comment section below. You guys got the number 16 ranked class in America, but we know Florida Gator recruiting heats up in the summer, and it looks like there's a lot of big names on the board. Let me know how we're feeling. Comment section below. Let's head over to Athens. Another massive recruiting weekend. It feels like we say that every weekend, but it's another big one. So I want to hit the highlights in this video. I got the great Steve Wiltfong here with me, and we got big names at G-Day. Look at this list. We'll start at the top with one-time Georgia commit, now current USC Trojan commitment, Justice Terry. Uh, he is going to be back in Athens this weekend. What do you make of it, Steve? Well, we've seen this before if you're a Georgia fan. USC coming into the Peach State, landed Michael Williams, landing Christian Miller, but where did those guys ultimately sign? They signed with Georgia. And I think that Georgia feels like they can do that again with guys like Justice Terry and Isaiah Gibson. And those guys, based on everything I'm hearing, there's certainly a lot of smoke that Georgia's very much in the thick of it, if not right at the top for both of those guys. So getting Justice mm -hmm. Terry back on campus for G-Day, obviously a lot of genuine interest there uh, in the Bulldogs and, and everything that why he was committed to Georgia once before, Kirby Smart, Trey Scott, the track record of that defense, proximity, all of that. Georgia very much could sign Justice Terry when it's all said and done. Yeah, crazy how those recruitments have a way of coming back around. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, massive tight end, Elias Williams. He's going to be on campus. He's committed to Georgia. The dog's playing a little defense here. Well, him and Ethan Barber, both tight end commits, going to be back on campus. I, I, li I think he ultimately signs with Georgia, but obviously being back at Miami last weekend, the Hurricanes considered the biggest threat to get Elias mm -hmm. back on campus at Georgia is for an exciting recruiting weekend is, is big. You just never know where the inches add up in recruiting. Again, I think he sticks with Georgia, but Miami doing what they can to flip him. So he's making a quick return after spending some time in Coral Gables. All right, Atlanta wide receiver Travis Smith. He goes 6'4", 200 pounds, number 11 ranked wide receiver in the country. Has really seemed like a priority for Georgia this entire cycle. He's going to be at G-Day. Uh, where do you think Georgia stands in this one, and who's their biggest competition? I think they're at the top of the board. You know, he just locked in four official visits for June, including Georgia. I think Georgia's setting the pace in this recruitment right now and they've done a great job with him and his family and this is just another opportunity to continue building on that mm -hmm. all right uh, i see that we got safety eric winters on on the visit list and you just dropped a prediction for winners but it's not to georgia right but hey these recruitments can change on a dime i think auburn's the leader for eric winters as he goes into his remaining visits and he's taken a lot of spring visits to his top schools georgia auburn tennessee miami uh, but i think that if georgia is pushing for eric winters that push begins this weekend and we'll see if they make a move on auburn 
Hmm. All right, one additional visitor we got to hit on before I let you go is Dijon Lee, and this is a big one. He's coming in from California. He's the number five ranked cornerback in the country, number 27 overall. So we're talking borderline five star here, and it looks like on his recruiting prediction machine, you got USC and Washington. Of course, the West Coast team's out top, but does Georgia have a chance here? I think they're the one to beat. That relationship with Dante Williams, his visit earlier this spring for spring practice, he really felt that the experience at Georgia was great. It was his first time meeting Kirby Smart. That was a box he had to check, uh, but he really feels like Georgia is a place that can develop him. Uh, he feels close to Dante Williams on the staff. Uh, Alabama and Texas A&M, he had great visits to them this spring as well, but Georgia is in prime position for one of the most coveted defensive backs in the country. Hmm. All right. Georgia fans, tap in with us below. How do you feel ahead of G-Day? Are you predicting any commitments? Let me know. All right, let's head over to Knoxville because it is a loaded visit weekend. I got on three Steve Wiltfong here with me to break it down. Steve, we start with big news of the weekend. Offensive tackle David Sanders is back in Knoxville. Felt like he just left. He was there last weekend. What do you make of these back-to-back -back visits for the number one offensive tackle in America? And he's been visiting Tennessee since the eighth grade. Yeah. So this is a program that he has great familiarity with. The Vols are very much a major contender for David Sanders Jr. moving forward. And his visit this time is going to start on Friday. And he's going to get a chance to see what it's like at Tennessee as a student athlete, maybe attend a class, obviously get more time around the coaching staff, see what that atmosphere is like for a spring game, get a chance to watch the coaches coach a little bit uh, on the field and, and, and just continue to try and picture himself at Tennessee. This is one that the official visits are also going to be big moving forward, and he'll take an official visit to Tennessee. Ohio State is a program rising in this recruitment. He is a top-of-the-board prospect for Georgia. They are pushing hard. There's been times where I thought Georgia was the leader in this. Yeah. Clemson was the child favor and you have the new staff at Alabama that impressed him when he visited there earlier this spring but Tennessee they are a school that should not be slept on in the recruitment of David Sanders Jr. this is another big opportunity this weekend really because he is going to get a chance to see what that life is like for a student athlete at Tennessee because he's going to spend so much time there on Friday leading into Saturday. Yeah, and if you follow the visits with David Sanders, all signs point to Knoxville right now, at least right now. But like you said, this recruitment still has some meat left on the bone. Uh, Jalen Matthews, another top 20 offensive tackle. He's going to be on campus. Tennessee's offensive line board is deep with talent. Uh, when it comes to Jalen Matthews, though, who's the biggest competition? Is it Miami? Well, I think that's a recruitment that's been fluid. Uh, but mm -hmm. one thing's for sure is that he loves Tennessee. And, and uh, you know, they seem like the hot school in this recruitment. Uh, talking to Austin Price over there, uh, publisher of our Tennessee site, he agrees. Um, so Tennessee very much in the thick of it for Jalen Matthews here right now. He's a guy that they've poured a lot into as well. And I think that they're in an exciting spot even coming into the visit this weekend. Mm. All right, wide receiver Derek Meadows. He's a big-time national recruit and – our Notre Dame insiders, Mike Singer and the boys, are pretty optimistic right now of their chances of, of Notre Dame's chance of landing Meadows. Uh, do you think that Tennessee is a real competitor here? Well, there was a time where I loved Notre Dame's position in this mm -hmm. recruitment as well, but the SEC programs are charging hard and making a big case. Kirby Smart, one of their favorite coaches in the country, had a great visit to Georgia. Alabama knocked it out of the park with him. Kalen DeBoer, Jamarcus Shepard, Nick Sheridan, that coaching staff did a fantastic job with that visit. And then he was also recently at LSU, the opportunity to potentially play with Bryce Underwood, to play at a place with such an elite track record of developing wide receivers. That was a big visit for LSU. And this is just no throwaway visit to Tennessee. I think Tennessee can make a move here this weekend with Derek Meadows. And then he has Michigan on the 20th. So yeah. although Notre Dame was maybe the favorite, did the most coming into the spring. A lot of these schools have made up a lot of ground with great visits, and I think he's taking his time with the process, and you know he'll take some official visits as well. All right. Uh, how important is it to have a quarterback like a George McIntyre who's committed on campus around guys like Meadows and Sanders? 
Yeah, he's one of the lightning rod recruits in this class. He's got a magnetic personality. Prospects are aware of how talented he is and the opportunity to play with him is an inch or two in a recruitment that could add up to a recruiting win. So having him being an ambassador for your class, it's, it's always huge when you have a, a quarterback in the fold that has, a, has a, that's charismatic, but also so widely known. And, and George McIntyre obviously was one of the most coveted passers in the country. All the top programs wanted him. Tennessee keeping him home was big and gets a chance to help recruit players around him. Yeah, he's definitely the bell cow of Tennessee's 2025 class. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, Faison Brandon, he's a 2026 arm, but he's probably somebody Tennessee fans should start to get to know. Yeah, he's the number one quarterback in the country on, on three. He's made a lot of visits this spring. LSU really resonated with him recently. Alabama, Georgia offered him while he was on campus. Um, so there's, a, you know, the who's who of college football already making a strong push early and it's Tennessee's turn to get him back and continue to impress him. He's been on the radar for a long time and has been keeping an eye on the volunteers. And it's another uh, another opportunity for them to impress this weekend. All right. Thanks, Steve. We will definitely go back and look at how David Sanders visit when also Derek Meadows, just a big weekend in Knoxville in general. All right, let's talk some Michigan recruiting with Steve Wiltfong. I got a few big names that were recently in our Ann Arbor visiting Michigan, and we'll start with running back Marquise Davis. He's from Cleveland, Ohio. Big RPM lead for Ohio State, but this was a really important visit to Michigan. How do you see this recruitment shaking out? Yeah, I don't think that Ohio State is going to be the landing spot for Marquise Davis. When I start handicapping this recruitment, I think the way I think Michigan is in prime position. And I know my colleague Chad Simmons agrees. You know, he talks about how it's a premier place for running backs. And, you know, he enjoyed being at practice over the weekend and, and getting around the people. He thought those were people that he could really be around, Coach Sharon Moore. And he's known Tony Alford for a long time, new yeah. Michigan running backs coach, was recruiting him at Ohio State. So that's been a seamless transition with them over at Michigan. Now, Kentucky, Tennessee, a couple other programs that are definitely in the mix. But Michigan looks like they could be trending for one of the most coveted running backs, certainly in the Midwest. Another big name on campus was wide receiver Quincy Porter. He's 6'3", 190, top 10 wide receiver in the 2025 class. Now, he's also coming off a visit to Ohio State. What do you think of Quincy Porter's recruitment right now? I think those are the two programs I'm keeping the keenest mm -hmm. eye on, Michigan and Ohio State. The game happening on the recruiting trail. Uh, Brian Hartline and those guys in Columbus, they covet him. You know, they're in the mix for a lot of talented receivers. And this is a young man, if he called them today and said, I want to come, they'd take him. That's how high, highly they think of him. They had a great visit with him over the weekend. Now, Michigan, he's been there several times, including the barbecue at the Big House last summer. Coach Ron Bellamy and, and the Wolverines have poured a lot into it. He loves the environment, the people, and, and certainly the track record of what Michigan has done over the last few years definitely speaks to him as well. So these are the two programs that I'm watching the most for Quincy, and it'll be exciting to see if he ends up wearing a winged helmet or if he's playing his college football inside the shoe. All right. We're only a couple of months into the Sharon Moore era at Michigan, but how do you evaluate so far his recruiting efforts? Well, I think that they're in the mix for some of their top overall targets, and they're going to keep getting them to campus this spring. Official visit season is going to be big for Michigan this June. But we, Sharon Moore was one of the top assistant coach recruiters in the country, helped Michigan recruit some of the best offensive line classes in the nation. Now, obviously, they have the three commits right now. Carter Smith was one of the quarterbacks at Kirk Campbell mm -hmm. in them really were high on for his dual threat ability. This is a young man that uh, maybe not as ranked as high in, 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 in the collective rankings, but on Michigan's board, they took him knowing that they were still in the Bryce Underwood sweepstakes. So that's just how coveted Carter Smith was for them. And then Eli Owens is a H-back type tight end out of Alcoa, Tennessee, that they think can be a, a dynamic difference maker for them in the passing game. And then Bobby Kanka from in-state is a defensive lineman that they like a lot. But uh, they're in on some big names. We just talked about two of them. Uh, 
um, some of the best offensive linemen in the country, Andrew Babaloa, Jack Lange, some of those yeah. guys are thinking strongly about Michigan. And so um, Kanoa Winston, uh, um, you know, Elijah Melendez is visiting this weekend, a linebacker committed to Miami. Uh, so th- there's a lot of, a lot of blue chippers that have an eye on Michigan right now. And I don't think Michigan's really like pushing – trying to just push guys in you know they, they, they're taking their time and, and want to make sure that they're getting the right personality fits as well mm, yeah makes sense uh michigan fans talk to me how do we feel right now about sharon moore's recruiting efforts comment section below all right steve that was a massive edition of the wilt fong whip around we will be back on monday for more but it's going to be an exciting weekend a major qb domino is going to fall by sunday and that's Houston Longstreet. Any other big developments you're watching, Steve? I'm always watching. There's always something that's happening, tracking, maneuvering. Uh, I think these visits this weekend will lead to some more guys that ultimately come off the board in the near future. All right. We'll see you on Monday.